Cheers and uh, welcome back to my garage. First of all, I want to thank all of you who has, uh, have been giving me some great feedback, uh, a lot of positive feedback. That's great. Um, there's a couple of reasons uh, for me making these videos, and uh, uh, the biggest reason uh, of them all is uh, uh, when I'm watching uh, YouTube, uh, or what I like to watch on YouTube uh, uh, is uh, well, I liked. I like to watch videos with people doing stuff in their uh, in their shops or garages or uh, whatever, uh, making stuff or uh, or just uh, uh, showing how things are done and uh, things like that. And um, so I hope maybe I could uh, contribute and uh, and so that other people like me who like to watch stuff like that uh, could enjoy these videos. Uh, the second reason for making these videos, uh, and that's also a big reason, is that I uh, am very really interested in uh, the subject, two strokes, and also in uh, just making stuff in general, making stuff with uh, what you've got. So, uh, yep. Uh, the third reason, uh, and that's also. Ah, not so big reason, but um, the third reason is uh, that I know that I'm not that good at explaining things, and uh, so I wanted to do this uh, series to get better at uh, explaining things to people, and uh, yeah. Okay, um, in this episode, we're um, we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk about uh, the clutch, the clutch pulley on my uh, SPX bike uh, and the variator on that bike, uh, the carb and the pipe. And I am uh, by request. I am going to show how I uh, uh, measure the balance factor of my crank. And uh, yeah, we'll get to that. So, uh, first, the clutch. Oh, wait, I'll do uh, the variator. For, no, <laughs> the carb first, because that's uh, uh, not much to say about that. Uh, it's an, and I'll do this. It's a Uko 24 millimeter carb. Nothing, uh, nothing uh, special about it. Uh, I've got this um, stage six velocity stack, or velocity stack uh, on it. Don't know if uh, there's any benefit to that at all. I guess I could check on my dyno when uh, I get this bike running right. Uh, clear float pole, red clear float pole uh, was the only one in stock. When I uh, finally decided to get one, and then realized how much the fuel was uh, foaming in the bowl. Usually, I run the stock one because uh, I've heard that uh, this won't last when uh, full of fuel. That it, it breaks down. People say I don't know. I have not experienced it yet myself. That's it. Oh. Then the variator. Uh, uh, I can start with the inner sheave. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I think, it's from a, uh, I think it's a Yamaha. Uh, scooter, uh, probably, not quite sure, but uh, what I've done with it, uh, it comes with uh, uh, cooling fins in the on the back side of it, 
and I've uh, ground off those and uh, uh, the inner diameter is smaller or the bore is uh, smaller no larger than my crank so I glued this uh, washer uh, to the back and uh, I've pressed in a bushing to make it fit the crank uh, that hole is from when I was triggering the ignition uh, from this uh, uh, variator sheep the uh, variator itself is a uh, Doppler ER1 variator uh, it's uh, uh, originally this uh, variator is made so that you can uh, push the pressure plate uh, back or pre push the sheave in and then you can push the pressure plate back and rotate it a little bit and then pull it off and change the weights and then put it on and rotate it and uh, it will lock again so that you can change weights without undoing the crank nut but uh, uh, that system uh, got teared apart from uh, it's probably meant for very low uh, power something like uh, four or five horsepower or something so uh, what I had to do was weld that bushing to this pressure plate like I said in the first video, first episode I made. Uh, or else this uh, variator is uh, stock. So this is a uh, performance variator for the Peugeot SPX. That's it. Uh, here's the clutch pulley. Uh, or this is the rear pulley or the driven pulley. And it has a clutch on it. So, uh, as my engine, uh, as my uh, transmission system works, there's uh, the variator on the crank, and the engine is moving. And then there's a jack shaft with the driven pulley and the clutch. And that's how it is uh, originally too, uh, or stock on the Peugeot SPX. And uh, on many other of the uh, Peugeot 103 models which SPX is uh, one of. Uh, there's a clutch on uh, the crankshaft and the rear pulley is just um, a pulley with no clutch function. Uh, I've modified this clutch uh, a little bit. I've um, replaced the springs with stiffer ones uh, and that's the, the springs I'm using are um, stock uh, Aprilia, S, Aprilia SR50 scooter springs. Uh, makes it engage at about uh, 11 to 12,000 RPM. Uh, also, uh, the triangle, uh, triangle brace you see here. That's the stock brace from the, um, from the stock pulley that came uh, on this bike. Um, and I, uh, this pulley did not come with a brace, uh, so that's not a good idea, I think. Uh, uh, since the posts that the shoes are riding on is not supported out here, so what I did was I, um, I removed the washers uh, that uh, was sitting on these posts, and probably. Uh, it was probably meant to do this because the washers were the correct thickness. So this was a direct replacement uh, fitted right on. So, um, yep, the reason I'm not running the stock pulley is because I was uh, going to make a manual clutch system for this and uh, therefore I cut that pulley uh, up and started looking at how to modify it but then that uh, project was uh, put on the back burner because I wanted to make this thing run uh, sooner and not having to worry about uh, figuring out uh, how to get a, uh, a ma manual clutch system to work so that's the reason and if you my
and uh, here's the stock pulley. And as you can see, I uh, I welded uh, the shaft to the pulley uh, because I had cut up the um, cut up the drum, or um, or oh, I think it's called the drum, the clutch drum. Uh, so it uh, I cut it from the shaft when I was. Uh, when I was uh, playing with the uh, manual clutch ID, so I couldn't use it. And uh, when I got the engine sorted and uh, I was ready to start it, I needed some way to uh, yeah, to get it started. And I do that by pulling the back wheel, so uh, I had to weld this up and uh, so I could start using the engine. Then I got the clutch pulley and um, so I, I don't need this anymore. Uh, not much more to say about that. Uh, um, well, how you start this bike? Uh, stock. It comes with a, a kickstarter, which uh, is a mechanism the mechanism that engages this gear on the rear of the pulley here. Uh, uh, I've removed that mechanism uh, to get room f uh, to make room for uh, the pipe and uh, and the. Uh, uh, parallelogram mount system, but it also com comes with this um, uh, uh, push start system. So if you push this button in like that, it grabs one of those posts here and locks the drum to the pulley. Then you can uh, uh, pull start it. And when the engine starts, it disengages. And that one, f uh, that uh, lever or er, button flies out, and it's free. So great system, works great. Uh, okay. I'll uh, bring you over to uh, my um, to my other table here, and we can take a look at the pipe. Uh, here's the pipe I'm uh, using. It's uh, nothing to look at really, but uh, the welds and all that, uh, the welds aren't very pretty at all, but uh, it's sustained together and uh, uh, it looks ugly on the outside but uh, I've made sure that the inside is uh, clean and uh, and uniform so uh, so it doesn't look like this on the inside there's no uh, no uniformity it's yeah, no, yeah. yeah it's it's clean nice and clean on the inside so all the transitions are uh, even and uh, there's no gaps or uh, or anything that sticks out or uh, or something like that. Um, this pipe started as a as a um, Technigas uh, scooter pipe uh, for some scooter. Uh, got it for free uh, from a friend of mine, um, and I've modified it uh, with. Uh, with help from a, a, a great software called Engmod, which I will talk about uh, more in a later episode. Uh, but uh, with the help of that uh, program, I've uh, changed some of the dimensions. I've uh, cut the belly um, uh, down, I think 25 or 30 or 35 millimeters. And I've um, uh, cut the um, the rear uh, cone and extended it because uh, how it was uh, how it was made it uh, terminated uh, at a kind of big diameter and then uh, the stinger was just welded in there so I um, I cut it and uh, extended it down to 14.9 millimeters inside diameter and uh, and welded a different stinger to it the silencer is a uh, is uh, from a uh, Aprilia SR50 scooter
same as the clutch springs uh, is from same scooter uh, there's been some uh, experimentation with uh, different uh, silencers and uh, stingers and uh, mounting and brackets so uh, it looks really looks like a hack job as it is now uh, the the header is actually uh, it's what co what's commonly called uh, at least on moped army a shovel shovel header and that's because this piece is uh, is cut from a shovel it's the it's the piece that uh, that holds the handle to the blade and uh, it has a nice taper and also a slight curve at the bottom and that uh, that uh, that suited me perfectly. Uh, so all I've done to this is uh, cut it off the, from the shovel uh, itself, and then uh, hammer it so it uh, to get it uh, evenly round all the way, and then weld it to the um, to my uh, flange. And inside this flange, there is you probably can't see that, but uh, the flange is uh, matched to the cylinder. But then there's a transition from the match surface, and then it, uh, it uh, goes out. So there's a um, an even transition from the cylinder uh, uh, size or shape of the port, and out to 27.5 millimeters. And that's done per advice from uh, from people on um, the team SA Tread on Kiwi Biker. Um, yep. Uh, the plan here, uh, and the reason why this pipe is, and there's a lot of people who's uh, who's asking me why am I running such a um, ugly pipe. Uh, that's because uh, uh, when I I want to get my bike running right with the setup I've got now. Uh, and then I want to verify that uh, my simulations in Engmod are uh, correct and that they correlate with the, my dyno, uh, my dyno uh, results and uh, when I know that and I know that my simulations are correct uh, I will uh, design and make a new pipe and also uh, modify the cylinder and, and uh, other, uh, other parameters of the engine but uh, for now, I just want to make it run right and uh, to get it to run right, get it running right. Uh, so I know that uh, what I do in the simulator will reflect what's going on in reality. So it's kind of a prototype. The whole bike is a prototype. And I plan to refine it when I know things are working as they are supposed to. So. Uh, Yep, not the best footage, but you get you get the idea. Uh, okay, then I will um, take you on to another table, and uh, we can start with the crank uh, balance factor uh, measuring. Uh, okay, uh, how to find the balance factor of your engine? How I uh, how I find the balance factor of my uh, not, uh, my crankshaft. Um, if you want to read more about or learn about what the balance factor is and um, and also uh, read uh, great instructions on how to do this the way I do it, because I learned it from um, uh, TC three fifty or Robert. Uh, the great guy who started uh, the team SA uh, uh, or ESE, uh, don't know how you pronounce that name, uh, thread, thread over at KB Biker. If you go to page uh, 70, I'll leave a link in the description there. Uh, that's when he started the write up on uh, balance factors and how to find what balance factor your crank is or uh, how to uh, find out uh, the measure. Measure your balance factor and measure uh, what you need to do to get the balance factor you want. So a big thanks to uh, him 
uh, and uh, his uh, his uh, or uh, he, the write up he did is how I learned how to do this and also uh, 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 where I learned what the balance factor is and why it's important and the balance factor is something that you don't uh, uh, you don't or at least I uh, didn't think about and you won't think about it uh, until you uh, experience problems uh, uh, that's caused by it caused by a wrong balance factor and the problems I'm having uh, with the wrong balance factor is uh, vibration that's the problem that's the problem that will come from the wrong balance factor and uh, the vibration uh, vibration is causing uh, fuel uh, f uh, fuel foaming or frothing in the board so I can't get it to my bike to run right because of this and I need to rebalance the crank to a higher balance factor because I know that a uh, lower balance factor is worse and I've also been given advice as I said in the ep uh, episode 1 uh, by Wobbly uh, over at Kiwi Biker to take it up from 38% to 60% so uh, I will do that and, uh, and record it in a later episode um, anyway um, I think uh, go to uh, to TC's posts on Kiwi Biker and read the instructions, and uh, and you will. Uh, I think he uh, makes it more clearly than I will do here. But I'll show you how I do it. So uh, the first thing I do is I I weigh the small end side of my conrod, and uh, I call that reciprocating mass. And I call that uh, a, it's a approximation, but I weigh the conrod on a scale. So I place the crank uh, beside the scale and I leave the conrod on it. Like that. Because the whole thing with the balance factor is to get the counterweight on the crank, or uh, uh, the balance factor is how much of the reciprocating mass which is the piston and uh, bearing and everything hanging uh, from the small inside of the conrod uh, how much of that mass uh, is balanced by the counterweight so uh, the first thing I do is to measure or weigh the conrod and it says 28 grams so I'll write that down you need that for later 28 grams Then uh, I I leave that on the scale, and I put the piston and wrist pin and circle clips and bearing, everything that's um, hanging uh, there, and it says uh, 108 or 109 grams. I got 109 before, so my scale isn't that accurate. But uh, I'll write down 109. Okay, then what you uh, will have to do is um, uh, you have to make a jig, it doesn't have to be uh, special at all, uh, mine is probably a little bit too crude, but um, so it's just two pieces of wood and so... <coughs> and some um, steel rod and that's to create a uh, friction fr uh, or low friction surface for the crank to rotate on um, one problem with the SPX crank is that uh, uh, it has different diameters on each side so uh, you really you have to make one side higher of the jig one, one side of the jig higher than the other side but um, that's my problem okay one other problem is that uh, as it rotates with the one smaller side it's uh, it moves uh, it rotates more on that side so it's hard to get this accurate the best thing would be to make a, uh, a jig with uh, two bearings on each side holding it but uh, since the balance factor isn't 
isn't that you don't have to be spot on it may be 61 or 59 I don't think that's too important so uh, anyway uh, you can see now that my counterweight is heavier than the small end if I can get it right you can see that uh, uh, no matter where I put it which position I put it in it moves back to the the big end on top and the counterweight on the bottom so the counterweight is heavier than the uh, uh, small end alone on this crank when out of the box the small uh, without anything uh, any any weight on the small end the small end was already heavier than the counterweight and uh, this gave me a balance factor of less than 25 percent it's extremely weird why the, they've made it that way most must be just an oversight or plain stupidity or something but anyway I uh, I pressed out those uh, grind ground out those aluminium slugs and I ground and the inside of the crank webs around the crank pin and that uh, as much as I could or I felt I could without weakening uh, the press fit and uh, the webs themselves and that brought me to uh, a, a balance factor of 38% and now I'll show you how you get the balance factor uh, with this jig and uh, the point here is to hang weight from the small end until the crank will stay in any position you put it so now you can see if I leave it here and I let go it rotates back it doesn't jam it rotates back to the counterweight on the bottom and if I leave it totally opposite now it's jammed again you can see it moves to having the counterweight on the bottom so now I will start I have made this hook and I'm adding washers and hanging it from the um, small end and I will add washers until my crank stays in any position that I put it so I try with this no still still too uh, light you can see it moves back Okay. so I do this and I hang washers from it until it will stay put in any position that I uh, place it and uh, I think this should be exactly that or uh, the correct weight to get it to stay in any position yes now you can see it doesn't rotate anymore it stays in ah, okay it's uh, swinging so but now it stays in any position that I put it roughly might be a few grams off but uh, Okay, so then I uh, I put the hanger and the washers I used on the scale, and I, it says 12 grams. So I take that number and I add it to the weight of the small end itself. So 28 plus 12. And that's uh, 40, 40 grams. And then you just divide that number, 40, by uh, the total reciprocating mass, which was uh, 109 grams. And then you get the balance factor. And let's see, to bring out the calculator here, um, 40 grams divided by... 109 and that's 36 no, 37 point 37 so uh, it says that my balance factor is 37 percent and that might be true I got 38 uh, last time I checked it but that may be my scale or it's not uh, totally accurate this jig I made and a lot of variables but it's in the ballpark so 37% okay I, uh, I hope that made uh, sense uh, and that uh, you 
understood what I was doing here or that I was able to make myself uh, clear or understandable or what you want to call it so uh, yep that's the, how you can uh, get the balance factor so check out the links in the description that's where I learned it from and uh, again a big thanks to uh, TC350 or Red Kiwi Biker so that's the uh, third episode of this uh, series then my new series or only series um, hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching please leave a comment if uh, there's anything you um, like to say if uh, you liked it or disliked it and why you liked it why you disliked it um, let's see here my next I've written down <laughs> really planning stuff now uh, my next episode uh, will be about the whole bike. Uh, last episode I said that the next episode would be about the whole bike, but uh, um, then I thought maybe there, it was a good idea to talk about the rest of uh, the engine and transmission first. So uh, the next video uh, be about the whole bike and the history of it. And uh, also uh, I, I think I'll leave it at that. Maybe about the dyno too. Or that might be uh, another episode. So, uh, again, thanks for watching. See you.